From lavender and tea tree oil to eucalyptus, the essential oils market in the United States is expected to reach $7.3 billion by 2024. Now that's according to a consulting firm called Grandview Research. But how do you really know what's inside those bottles? Focus investigative reporter Paula Vassan puts them to the test. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. The demand is growing. Its uses are endless. We have a customer that sprays it on our hair. I use lavender on my dryer balls instead of using dryer sheets. For people like Allie Martin, who's long suffered from migraines. It's really helped me. Lavender is essential. It helps me sleep. Essential oils are often celebrated as an all-natural solution. Some are believed to help with relaxation, others energize. But according to attorney Alex Davis, it's an industry rife with misrepresentation. You have issues with quality control, you have issues with uh, marketing claims that may or may not be true. What's the problem with that? You don't know what you're getting into. So we put essential oils under the microscope. Three oils at three price points, focusing on one of the most popular kinds, lavender. The lowest cost, from a company called Artisan Oils, and Amazon's Choice. A medium cost, from Revive. The most expensive, from Young Living. We sent them to Flora Research Laboratories in Oregon for testing. We use uh, advanced analytical instrumentation to, to look at the composition of these oils. Discovering, despite the label, the lowest cost oil isn't true lavender. We call that adulteration. So this should be labeled lavendin. Unlike real lavender, he says lavendin is a less expensive oil made from a different plant with a different scent. It could be potentially harmful. Possibly irritating skin, he says, labeling this marketing misleading. As for the two other more expensive oils we tested. Both uh, met the profiles for authentic lavender. So based on these lab results, how could artisan oils say it's one thing, but actually be another? We've been working to get that answer from them for nearly a month. Our emails and calls unanswered. We spoke with a representative in their call center. That person said they work from this building in Phoenix, but said the oil's made in Denver. We went to that address on their website in Denver. The building's manager told us they have a mailbox here, but no one actually works here. We also explained our findings to Amazon, asking how it's an Amazon's choice. They told us this product does not violate Amazon policies. Essentially, the agency charged with helping to ensure consumers are protected can't protect consumers. He's talking about the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. In general, essential oils aren't legally held to the same standard as pharmaceutical drugs, which means there's no federally mandated routine testing of them. If essential oils claim to cure disease, as a drug would, the FDA steps in. For example, in 2014, the federal agency found distributors from Young Living, one of the companies we looked into, were marketing products as cures for cancer, viral infections, and heart disease. The penalty? This warning letter. It isn't held accountable the way it should be. Martin knows that's a reality, but says these will continue to be her everyday essentials. I have seen great results for myself. But she has this message to those behind the oils. I would really love for companies to be transparent about where they're sourcing their ingredients from. This investigation isn't about whether essential oils work or not. Right now, medical experts say their effectiveness is mostly based on anecdotal evidence, not science. It's about knowing what's in the bottle is labeled on the bottle. You can head to whas11.com for the full results of the oils we tested. For Focus, I'm Paula Bassan.